Good day children. Today in this video we will see the lesson after 20 years. After 20 years tells the story of Jemmy and Bob, two childhood friends who made a promise to meet up after 20 years. The story begins with a beat cop walking down a New York City street. The cop projects a sense of strength and takes his round very seriously. Here, beat means a beat cop. Beat means the path that the policeman follows while on duty. Midway of a block, the policeman suddenly slowed down. He saw a man leaning against the doorway of a darkened hardware store. As the policeman walked up to him, the man spoke up quickly. It's all right, officer, he said. I'm just waiting for a friend. It's an appointment made 20 years ago. Sounds a little funny to you, doesn't it? Well, I'll explain if you had like me to. 20 years ago, there used to be a restaurant where this store stands now. Big Joy, Braddy's Restaurant. So what happened? When the policeman was on rounds, he saw a man standing near one of the closed stores. He, ap he approaches and the man begins to explain his presence, telling him that he is waiting for an old friend. And 20 years before, he and his friend made a promise to meet up at this site. He acknowledges that it's a pretty old place to meet explaining that 20 years before it was a restaurant owned by a man named Big Joy Brady. It was torn down five years ago, said the policeman. The man shifted and a dim light from a neighboring store showed a pale, square-jawed face with keen eyes and a little white scar near his right eyebrow. His scarf pin, the pin of the scarf, was an was an oddly set large diamond. The scarf pin was a large diamond. So you can see I have just cropped the image and you can see the man yes and the scarf around his neck he has a diamond which has been pinned in his scarf. This shows the wealth of the man. So the cop tells him that the restaurant closed down about five years ago. And the man is about to narrate his story, what happened 20 years back. 20 years ago tonight, said the man, I dined here at Big Joy Brady's with Jemmy Wills, my best friend and the finest chap in the world. Finest chap means a young boy, yes, or a young boy or a young man. He and I were raised here in New York, just like two brothers. I was 18 and Jemmy was 20. The next morning, I was going off to the west to make my fortune. This man was about to go to the west. To west refers to western part of United States of America. You could not have uh, dragged Jemmy out of New York. He thought it was the only place on earth. No one can drag Jemmy out of New York. So he thought that he uh, he thought it was the only place on earth. Well, we agreed that night that we would meet there exactly 20 years from the date and time. No matter what our conditions might be or from what distance we might have to come. So what happened? They then made their agreement to meet on the same uh, spot in 20 years. Because they were each confident of having achieved great things in that time. And the cop finds himself interested in the story and asks if they stayed in touch during that time. So the cop asked, right, where you people were there in touch during those times. And the man admits, yes, they wrote letters. and um, But after a year or two, they lost the track of each other. You see, it isn't easy trying to make a life in the West. And I got rather busy. The man got busy. But I know Jemmy will meet me here if he is alive. For he was always the truest stanchion old chap in the world. Stanchion refers to 
a reliable person, a loyal person. He will never forget. I came a thousand miles to stand at this door tonight. And it's worth it if my old friend turns up. The waiting man pulled out a handsome watch, the lids of which were set with small diamonds. The man admits that they tried to and wrote each other for a, for a little while. They wrote letters for a little while. But um, they lost the track when the, this man got very busy in West. And uh, the man is confident that Jemmy will meet him as promised. Because Jemmy was an extremely reliable person. He tells the cop that he travelled a very long way to be there but will consider it worth it if he gets to see his friend again. He checks the time on an expensive watch. So what happened? The cop makes to leave and offers his hope that Jemmy shows up. He asks if the man will leave if Jemmy doesn't make it by 10 o'clock. The man says he will wait at least an additional half an hour because he has total faith that if Jemmy is alive, he will make uh, the appointment. The cop accepts this and leaves. So what happened after the cop leaves? There was now a fine cold drizzle falling and a steady wind was blowing. A few people on the road hurried silently with their hands in their pockets and coat collars turned high. And in the door of the hardware store, the man who had come a thousand miles to meet the friend of his youth waited patiently. So what happened? The rain gets heavier and uh, the man waits. After about 20 minutes, we'll see what happened. Ab about 20 minutes he waited. And then a tall man in a long overcoat with a collar turned up to his ears hurried across from the opposite side of the street. He went directly to the waiting man. So the tall man came near this man who was standing near the hardware store and asked, Is that you, Bob? He asked doubtfully. Is that you, Jemmy Wells? cried the man at the doorway. So at last, Bob saw his friend Jemmy Wells. So the man's name is Bob. Bless my heart! exclaimed the new arrival, grasping the other's hand with his own. I was certain I had find you here if you were still alive. Well, well, well. Twenty years is a long time. The old restaurant's gone, Bob. I wish it had lasted. So we could have had another dinner there. So, Jemmy wished to have another dinner with Bob. How has the West treated you, old man? Jemmy is asking Bob that, how has the West treated you? So, uh, Jemmy asked Bob, how has the West treated you? So Bob is telling that it has given me everything I asked it for. You have changed a lot, Jimmy. I never thought you were so tall by two or three inches. Oh, I grew a bit after I was twenty. Doing well in New York, Jimmy? Moderately, I have a position in one of the city departments. Come on, Bob. We'll go around to a place I know of and have a good long talk about old times. So Jemmy is offering uh, Bob to come around with him to the place he knows and have a good long talk about old times. Bob and Jemmy being to walk arm in arm. Bob tells Jemmy the story of his life and Jemmy listens, obviously interested. Jemmy was very interested in Bob's story. When they reach a corner and stand under a street light, however, Bob pulls away and declares that the other man is not Jimmy Wills. So the man, the tall man, he's not Jimmy Wills. So how did he come to know about this? You're not Jimmy Wills, he snapped. Twenty years is a long time, but not long enough to change a man's nose from a Roman to a pug. Roman here refers to Nose with a high bridge, a big nose. Pug refers to here a short nose with an upturned tip. 
So, Jemmy's nose was like Roman and not a pug. So, what happened? Here, Bob realizes that his companion can't be his old friend Jemmy Wells. So, um, he is shocked to realize he has been confessing his sins to a complete stranger. It sometimes changes a good man into a bad one, said the tall man. You have been under arrest, Silky Bob. The Chicago police, thinking you may have come this way, wired us that you are wanted. Going quietly, are you? So this man who was with Bob was not Jemmy, he was also a cop. And uh, he said that, shall we move quietly from this place? Are you? He said. And Bob nodded. Yes, he said. That's sensible, said the cop. Now, before we go to the station, here's a note I was asked to give you. You may read it here at the window. It's from Patrolman Wells. The man from the west unfolded the little piece of paper. His hand was steady when he began to read, but it trembled a little by the time he finished. The note was rather short. So this is the note. Bob, I was at the appointment place on time. When you shifted and the dim light fell on you, I saw it was the face of the man wanted in Chicago. Somehow I could I couldn't do it myself. So I went around and got a plain clothes man to do this job. So plain clothes man means uh, the policeman who is not uh, in uniform. And in the beginning a policeman came, right? A cop came. So he was actually his old friend Jemmy Wells. So this is the note from Jemmy. Bob realizes that the policeman he had been uh, talking to at the beginning of the story was actually his old friend Jemmy Wells and that Jemmy had remembered their appointment and kept it. He also realizes that Jemmy had changed a great deal in his uh, past 20 years just as Bob had, j had changed. Jemmy still cared enough about Bob to... Uh, to feel he could not arrest him personally, but his sense of duty was stronger than his sense of friendship. He is the author of the story, O. Henry, 1862-1910, to is best known for his short stories, which are famous for their wordplay, realistic characterization, and twist endings. This story is about two friends, Bob and Jimmy, who had promised to meet 20 years later at a particular time and place. The twist at the end of this tale reveals how each friend lived up to the promise. Thank you children.